Oh, okay. So dramatic. We're back, the headless YouTuber and her trusty pug pudge who does not want to cooperate today and is just very needy. I'm probably going to have to lock him in the bedroom for most of this video, but I'm really ADHD right now, which means my brain uh, is getting sidetracked very easily and it's hard for me to focus on my thoughts. I was not planning on filming today, but I think it's gonna be the last sunny day until snow for the next who knows how long. So I wanted to take advantage. I'm probably gonna try and film two videos today. Oh no. Oh, come on. Trouble in rubber tree paradise. It kind of looks like there's a little fungal spot on there. Although, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm just gonna make this short and sweet. Today is December favorites. I feel like I was just here and I know I just said that in November favorites, but because I'm leaving for California again, I have to expedite all these videos. So uh, we are here. It's actually only the first week of December in my universe, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorites that I didn't show you last month. And I can't remember if there are repeats. Might be. Don't know. Today I have 15 plants. No, today I have 10 plants to show you that I am extra loving right now, whether it's because it's pushed out new growth or it's just been growing really well for me. Um, I think one or two of them look a little bit sad, but they still made the cut. I wanna get up and grab some of the plants, but if I get up, my puppy dog is gonna think something's going on. I could try and act really casual, although I feel like He's still gonna get amped. Okay, let's just try this. Nothing suspicious, just a normal day. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Ow. Ow, that hurt. Oh, it hurts. You know when like a big, like bubble of air goes down with your drink and it feels like you're your esophagus or whatever just like kind of expanded a little bit Ow. I am sorry for the sort of weird lighting I feel like it's like really dark but I have a huge south facing window right next to me and it is currently just directly on me so if I open it it's going to be all sunlight I might open it a little bit later to kind of show you some textures on the leaves but otherwise it's going to be kind of dark like this i'll see if i can lighten it in post-production but just a forewarning so the first plant that i have is some kind of tradescantia i don't know exactly what kind it is it was sold to me as a quicksilver but i i don't actually think this is a quicksilver i haven't really done a ton of studying or research on different tradescantias but for some reason, this one just really appealed to me. I actually put out an ISO in a group for this and I got it as a one stem cutting and it was probably about this long. It was really small. It was in this tiny little cup and then it just took off. Like, I don't even remember it getting to this point. It's not like I was chopping and propagating. It just started as one stem, stuck it in soil and then it turned into this big bushy thing because if you haven't grown tradescantias before, oh no. If you didn't know, so I'm gonna try and show you, down at the base, it just kind of pushes out wherever it wants to. So you can see on this stem right here, this new stem is poking out of one of the auxiliary buds and starting a totally new stem. So that's how I got four stems on this thing. The main stem was this one right here. <laughs> the smallest one actually is the original one and then it pushed out these ones from the main stem. So I do think that I will probably chop and propagate this at some point because they're, I, I don't know, I feel like the internodes are really long and I think maybe that's why I haven't really been drawn to tradescantias. I'm not really a fan of the growth pattern, just kind of the way that the leaf hangs off the vines. It just doesn't really appeal to me, but the reason I wanted this plant was because, specifically because of the variegation. Like, if you look at these leaves like on an individual basis, they are freaking stunning. And honestly, like if this variegation was on any other plant, like a Monstera stanleyana or, like a trubii or something, like something 
like that, like a more trendy plant, people would eat it up in a hot second. But yeah, I just, I feel like trade escanches kind of have the rap of not being like a cool plant and nobody really talks about trade escanches. But I don't know, this one specifically, I really love it. And I really just like admiring each individual leaf rather than the entire plant as a whole. And one day I will photograph this for the gram, but like, look at that, that's beautiful. And it, it kind of has this like sheen to it. It's very, uh, it's not sticky, but it's sticky, if you know what I mean. Like, it's got like this rubbery feel, but then it's also a bit fuzzy. Like you can see some of the hairs, like the very fine, very fine hairs on the stem and on the leaf itself. It's, it's a strange little plant, but I really love it. So I think the next step is gonna be to chop it and propagate it and get it back in here because it is quite bare and I think I'm going to give a bit to my mom. I feel like she would really like this plant. It would look really great on her shelf. But anyway, I thought this one be, would be a good one to start with. I, I don't even think I've ever shown this on my channel before. Could be wrong. Maybe it was a lot smaller when I showed it, but it's definitely big now. It's growing really well. It's in a no drainage pot with just my normal aeroid mix. I am fertilizing this one the same that I fertilize all my other plants and yeah, growing like a dream. The next plant I'm gonna show you, I didn't get an ID on this before I started recording this, but I think this is a Hoya Pachiclata, Pachiclata. I can't remember if I've ever shown this one on my channel before. It's kind of one of just those Hoyas that are just in my cabinet that I don't really pay a ton of attention to, but when I do give it attention, I'm just always in awe of it, mostly because this leaf is like, it's a paddle. Like you could row like a kayak or a canoe with this thing. Like just rip this baby off and just, you'll get, you'll go places, I promise you. She's, she's solid. This is all muscle, this is like pure muscle. And not only that, it's like very fuzzy. I feel like a lot of Hoyas are fuzzy or like most Hoyas are fuzzy. No, that's a false statement. Don't listen to me. Most of the Hoyas that I own are fuzzy and it's not like that like like that obvious fuzz. It's the like the peach fuzz that you have like like on your face. It did push out this brand new leaf, but before this leaf was a bloom. What is it? Penduncle? Hoya bloom? Oh, hated it so much. I've mentioned before that I do not like Hoya flowers. I don't like that they're like perfectly circle. I don't like their like I don't like that they're clustered. I don't like, I don't like anything about them. I think they are just the most repulsive things ever and that's mostly because I'm trypophobic. So the Hoyas or the flowers lasted maybe like a week and then it fell off and that was like the best day of my life. But finally I have an actual new leaf because that is what I signed up for. It's still growing, still hardening off but there are two more coming here. And you know what else is hilarious? Well, maybe not hilarious, but something that just occurred to me recently that you guys are probably gonna bully me for, which pff, by all means, I had this like, I had this realization that Hoyas grow in the wild. Guys, I, I promise you, I'm not kidding, like, I don't know why it just never occurred to me that Hoyas would be present in the wilderness. Like if you go into a jungle or wherever, there'd just be like one of these growing there. They just seem so unnatural in a way. Like they look like pieces of art, you know? Like I just can't imagine them in the wild. I guess that's what I'm saying. And it just never, freaking occurred to me that they're in the wild. And so then I started going down this rabbit hole of just like Hoyas in the wild and just poof, mind blown, right? So anyway, yeah, that's my whatever, exposing myself on the internet for being a idiot. But anyway, I had to include this because it has rewarded me with a new leaf and it's just so cute. This one is in a no drainage pot with Leka. And I did get a moss pole on here and like all these roots are growing like crazy. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do with Hoyas. I know you're supposed to put them on trellises, but I don't like trellises. And I have this little 3D printed ghost that my sister gave me for good luck and um, partnership. They're just living together and 
They seem to be living in harmony. So Hoya Pachiclata, great Hoya. This is a string of nickels plant. I got this one from my friend Jing and I posted this on July 19th when I first got it and look how small it was. So since then, it's had a lot more growth. It pushed out this little thing here and it's working on another one in there. And I think it's even working on a secondary one somewhere down there. But I, I'm not really sure what the pattern is, like the growth pattern. I think that the ones that I've seen online are like in big baskets and they kind of just trail. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And honestly, it's gonna be fine in here for a while. This thing had like, the pot that it's in is like way bigger than what it needs. And I don't know if you remember seeing this in my algae flush video. This was one of them that I flushed, my soil plant. And uh, yeah, it's doing pretty good so far. Haven't done another flush since then. It's got some algae down at the bottom, but otherwise it's totally fine. It seems to not mind um, living in a no drainage pot. This one is in my red stick cabinet with the rest of my Hoyas and some of my cacti. Yeah, it's kind of taken off in there. I do think that it really likes the warmth. It likes being directly under the grow light. And I'm not fertilizing this one too much, to be honest, but I just like cannot get over how stinking cute this is. Like, oh, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be fuzzy. It's not fuzzy. So it's kind of got the same sort of texture as that patchy clada I showed you, but obviously on a much smaller scale, not fuzzy, but again, very rigid, very hard. I know I always explain the, the way it feels to you, and that's because whenever I watch plant videos and I see people with plants that I've never seen in person before, sometimes I just like wanna know what it feels like. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the best sort of parts about owning plants is that like sensory experience that you have with them. So yeah, I try and explain how the plants feel whenever I can remember, whenever I can, because I just want you to feel like you are here with me and you can touch the plant and feel what I'm feeling. So yeah, anyway, I mean, it's not, you know, I wouldn't pick this plant up after a hard day and just be like, oh yeah. But <laughs> now that we're here and I'm touching it, it's a little cutie. Let's try and open it a little bit. Ugh, it's so harsh. Well, at least you can kind of see the plant. I'm just gonna have a moody December favorites this month. This is a Xerosisius, Xerosisius, am I okay? This is a Xerosisius, am I okay? This is a Xerosisius, oh my This is a Xerosisius, Xerosisius Dangui. I, no. Okay, this is a, <laughs> Zero Sisios, Zero Sisios, Zero Sisios Dengui. I can't remember if I've shown this video before. I'm sure I must have, maybe in like my Rudsta cabinet tour or Rudsta cabinet video, but uh, it, it would have been a lot smaller. All of this up here is brand new growth. This down here is a propagation from another plant that I gave a friend. And yeah, I'm just trying to fill it in. I, I don't really know, I don't really know what this does. I, I think maybe it's supposed to climb a trellis or something. I'm not, I'm not thinking that this one is a trailing plant just because of how stiff these stems are and the fact that it's naturally growing up and not sort of going down, although maybe once it gets heavier it will. I don't know, I guess we will cross that bridge when we get there, but for now this one is just living in my Rudsta cabinet um, up against a wall, so it's kind of being supported this way. But I do know that I need to kind of figure something out soon because it's getting pretty tall. But again, let's take you on that textural experience. Uh, very much like the String of Nickels and the Hoya Pachiclata, very rigid, stiff, and hard leaves. Smooth, not fuzzy at all. Kind of just has like that matte feeling to it. These ones up here are much thinner and they sort of have this like concave backsides. Whereas these ones here are just like solid little paddles. This one kind of has like a divot or like a dip in the back seal. It's kind of hard to uh, 
explain. Not much else to say about it. Just yeah, it makes me happy whenever I see it. I'm glad that it's growing really well. It is just in a very dirty vessel, no drainage vessel with pond and a little bit of LECA to just keep it supported up top. Lots of new growth here and overall, no complaints. I can't see a thing. Anyway, I am moving into the more pillowy plants now, so maybe this sun will do me some favors. If not, I just need to stop recording around this time. I have decided I am going to take a pause for like half an hour and see where the sun moves. Maybe recording on a sunny day was not my best plan. Oh well. All right, well, the sun is just getting worse and worse and I feel like by the time it's completely down, then you won't be able to see anything. So now we're really just having some moody lighting in this video, uh, but it's kind of nice though, cause you can see this like amazing pillowy, shimmery texture of the philodendron SP Columbia that Man, I'm telling you, these are one of those plants where I'm just like, what are you doing in my house? Like, yeah, these are one of those plants that I see every day and I'm just never not in awe of it. I think what it is about this plant is that the, the venation is darker and so it's like, it makes it look even more sunken in than it actually is already. And I'm not really sure what my favorite part of this plant is. I don't know if it's this beautiful sort of silvery, bluish green color it hardens off to. I don't know if it's this sunken in venation. I don't know if it's like the overall puffiness of it or the fact it's got this like, very slight glimmer when it catches the right light. I don't know, I can't pick one like favorite thing about this plant. It's just as a whole, I just love it so much. I kind of want another one of these to try and grow outside the greenhouse. This one was living on my shelf for a little bit before I went to California. But then when I left, I put it back in the greenhouse just, I don't know, just for safe measure because I kind of felt nervous about leaving it out while I was gone. And so this leaf pushed out in the EXO and now seeing sort of how beautiful and big it is, I'm like, do I really want to put it back outside? I don't, I don't know. So I kind of want to see if I can snag another one from Lauren at North Shore Tropicals just to see if I can grow it outside, like purely outside. And I don't know, I feel like these are one of those plants that like if it ever dropped in price, I would probably, hoard them like I hoard McDowell's and Gloriosums just because, just because you don't need an explanation. Here's a really fun thing too about this plant that I feel like not a lot of people talk about and it's the petiole. So the petiole has this like bumpy, yeah, it's got like this bumpy texture to it. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got these little dots and like the Gloriosum that sort of has this same sort of texture to it uh, visually, it's it's actually smooth. The like Gloriosum has a smooth petiole. I mean, this one, it's actually bumpy. It's got a very like hard, bumpy surface. Uh, another thing that I really love about this plant is the fact that it pushes out of these like really bright pink caterpillars simil similar to like an Ingera tense or a McDowell or a Gloriosum. And um, there's just uh, there's just so many good things about this plant. This one is still in the original moss that it came in um, <laughs> when I got it from Lauren, and you can see it is coming out now. It definitely needs to be repot. It is super super root bound in this moss. I am not going to enjoy untangling this, but I think this is one of those plants that I'm going to repot in the spring. I don't really want to touch it right now. Not that I have doubts that it'll do fine during a winter transplant, but I don't know. It's growing so well that I just don't really feel the need, like the very urgent need right now. So yeah, Philodendron SP Columbia, just always freaking in awe of this plant. Put a blanket on my butt because this leather couch keeps squeaking. Anyway, this is my Philodendron Soderini, which is a smaller version of a Soderoi, although it is starting to beef up and look more Soderoi-ish, which is kind of exciting. But it had outgrown its pole, so it reached the top of this pole down here, and it's already pushing out a new leaf up top. And I just decided, you know what? I'm not going to remove it from this pole because it's growing so well. 
I also am too lazy to make a moss pole. So we're just gonna lazy moss pole it. So what a lazy moss pole is, is basically just a piece of grid that is wrapped around the moss pole as an extension. And as the plant grows, you just keep filling it with moss. And then you use these like ties to secure it, to kind of make it into like a, what is this shape? You know, this shape so that it like holds the moss intact and it kind of becomes like a pole as it goes up. It just looks really ugly like in the process, but this node here will be able to root into the moss that I've stuffed in here. So, you know, I find, I do love these kind of sphagnum moss poles, but it's just, it's so hard to extend. And I, I don't know, I've just, I was too lazy to make a larger one. I liked that this plant was already fully um, kind of wrapped around this pole and I'm starting to see the noticeable size difference. So I didn't want to disrupt it in any way. I just, I wanted it to keep going. And I mean, if it works, it works, you know, like I'm not in it to make everything look like freaking beautiful. I just want things to be functional. Sometimes I really like, I get pressed about things looking a certain way, but for stuff like this, I don't know. You know, it's in my EXO, nobody sees it except for me. It does its job, whatever. And then once, you know, it outgrows this, then I'll take it apart. I'll be able to reuse this and reuse the moss. So besides a lazy moss pole situation, let's just look at this plant in general. This thing, I had like very high doubts. I had doubts that I'd be able to grow this to what it looks like now. I've owned a Soderini before and it hated me. And I think that the main reason it hated me was one, it wasn't living in high humidity. I was not fertilizing it regularly. Uh, it wasn't climbing anything. It, it just kept pushing out these sort of wonky warped leaves. But I did mention in another video where I showed my friend Jing's plant that I rehabbed for her. I honestly, I just feel like I've got the Soderini care down to a like down to a science and I'll mention it again CalMag is this plant's best friend um, I do a very diluted amount of CalMag every wa every single watering I make sure to also fertilize the poles because these aerial roots that are clinging onto your poles um, also want to be fertilized and yeah I just I'm so happy with this it's just funny because all the leaves are kind of like this instead of forward because I got my big Mars Hydro light into my big XO and because the light is so strong, all of my leaves are starting to face upward. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just kind of what comes with it, you know, when you're growing indoors. That's why a lot of the times in my Instagram photos, I'll hold things at an angle so that the leaves kind of drop down and you can see it. Otherwise, like if I took a photo just like this, like you'd be able to see like this one and these, but these are just like sticking straight up. Anyway, if you look at it from this view, Gorgeous. I remember when I posted this plant, uh, maybe like a year and a half ago in one of those like plant hobbyist groups that I'm no longer part of any hobbyist groups, like, you know, house plant lovers, things like that. Like I've left all of those groups, but there was one time where I did post, someone posted about a Soderini and they wanted to know like information about it or whatever. Most of the comments were like, throw it away, it's a virus plant, like it's never gonna grow, it's not gonna do anything. And I do think that some of the Soderinis that were being um, pushed out of the greenhouses were very sort of like sickly looking, bad genetics, but I feel like the ones more recently that have been coming out are a little bit more stable. Mine doesn't have that sort of strange variegation that they used to have like back in, I think it was like 2019 or 2018 where the Soderinis were like highly variegated. I still see some of those being sold around. I try to avoid them because I find that those kind of do grow weird. So anyway, that is enough of this plant. It is so, so beautiful. I am hoping for some like big full-size leaves. Is that spider mites? I have this one in one of 
those plastic pots I was talking about in a previous video. It's mostly just soil. You can see a big chunk of moss right here in the center. And that is because this thing was crazy, crazy, crazy root bound in moss. And if you guys have seen Soderini roots, they are super fine. They're very delicate. And I just didn't want to disturb it too much. And I'm glad I didn't because now looking at it, I think it was a good call to kind of just like let it be. So honestly, I ripped off as much moss as I could and I just kind of plunked it into the soil. You might regret doing that like for a larger plant or like once this becomes root bound and then it's root bound in soil plus even more root bound in the moss. It's not the greatest experience. So what I'll say is if you have some moss in your soil, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you're watching your conditions. Of course, uh, sphagnum moss retains a lot of water if you're just watering it normally. So this ball of moss here is going to hold way more water uh, over a period of time than let's say my, my aeroid soil which is way more aerated. So because this plant is getting constant warmth and light, I am not worried about this soil drying out. Like clockwork, the entire thing, if I don't water it in a week, it's gonna be dry. Like for that, I'm not very worried, but let's say if this plant was out here on my shelf where it's a little cooler, it's not getting as like harsh of light, I would worry about the roots not utilizing all of that water in the moss and it's sort of just sitting there and that's how you get root rot and stuff like that. But again, I will say just I don't recommend doing this. If you can pull off your moss before transplant into soil, that's ideal. But a little bit of moss in your soil is not going to kill your plant. I've done it plenty of times. Just know your conditions and you will be golden. All right, just a forewarning. This next plant looks a little beat up. She looks like she's seen some things but we had a hard time, but she's finally recovering. This is a philodendron Ningra tense. Uh, what you're looking at here is a combination of root rot, uh, spider mites, thrips, and a fungal, some type of fungal disease, and then me treating with an antifungal and it being in a place with not enough airflow. So, you know, she's she's been through some, she's been through some And I kind of neglected it for a while because of like how sort of beat up it was looking. I had it in the back of my tent for a long time, but I moved her into the XO just because I felt so bad and like, when I first got this plant, I was just in love with it. And I still love it so, so much for a lot of reasons. But I just feel like it's it's been so up and down with us that I, I just get a little bit frustrated sometimes with her. But she is pushing out a new leaf and there is nothing like a new Ning leaf. The sun is setting now and I feel like I've got the perfect light. I kind of wish I had this lighting the whole time. But I'm going to try and power through this despite the fact Pudge is very upset. I put him back in the bedroom. My camera died while I was talking about this and I can't remember if I was done talking about it or not, but I will just wrap it up in case I didn't finish. Uh, great plant. I love that the petioles on this are this red color. It's also bumpy, very, very bumpy. And also the new growth is just this beautiful, beautiful pink color that is unlike any other plant I've ever owned before. When I saw the philodendron linamii at the Echo Jenner show, I was just incredibly underwhelmed. I don't know if it was just the plants that they had there specifically, but I don't know, just, I, I didn't see like a huge difference that would make me want to spend the money on one um, that I couldn't get from this plant. I actually took that one off my wish list. I don't actually want it anymore. If one day it was offered to me for free, sure, why not? But I'm not going to spend my money on one of those plants. I would much rather baby this one. And I feel like we are finally gonna get back on good track. I am hopeful by the springtime, it's gonna look a lot better than it looks now. But you know, despite everything she's been through, she's been very resilient. I am very grateful for this plant and uh, yeah, really excited to see this new one open. The next one is the only Anthurium I'm including this month. It was sold as an Anthurium Ace of Spades crossed with a Dark Mama, if I'm remembering that correctly. But honestly, I highly doubt the parentage of, the, of that plant to actually be 
to actually be that. To be honest, I'm not really all that pressed to find out what the actual parentage is. Of course, it would be nice, but I've just been enjoying this plant for what it is. I didn't buy it for the ID. I just bought it because it was beautiful. So, uh, I, I, yeah, the original import leaf was, I think it was this one. I think this, I think this was one of the last ones it came with. The other one died off but all of these grew in my care and it's actually working on another one. I have not had much trouble with this plant, to be honest. And if you guys look at this insane potting, situ potting situation we have, it just can't be bothered. But again, this one is also on the very, very high priority list to get repotted just because it's starting to come upward. I actually broke off a piece. Uh, it's breaking out of this secondary pot that I got it in. It is begging to be repot, but I mean, despite it looking like this and being in kind of like old crusty soil, it's growing really well. And my friends have bigger ones of these. I imported a smaller one just because I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't justify the price of them. Although theirs are just, oh, they're beautiful. I'll see if I can throw a photo up of it, but you know, we're getting there. I, I've i been learning to be more patient. I wanted to include this just because I've appreciated how resilient it's been despite being moved in the tent, being moved to different exos. At one point, I even had this living outside of an exo and it pushed out new growth and then it just kind of aborted in the catafil. So I put it back in the exo and it's, that seems to be what it wants. But while we're talking about anthuriums, I actually do have an upcoming project I wanna work on. I am going to convert one of my exos that house mostly anthuriums already, I'm going to officially convert that into an anthurium exo. I wanna get the lights a little bit dimmer in there. I don't want it to be as bright. I wanna get some kind of small air filter in there to filter out air um, to prevent uh, fungal stuff because anthuriums are just so prone to bacterial and fungal diseases. Uh, and yeah, I just kind of want to get the ideal setup for it. I'm not really too worried about it being aesthetically pleasing. I don't plan on building like a moss wall or anything. If I, if I can keep humidity for my anthuriums at like 60%, honestly, they're fine. Like I don't feel the need for them to be in any higher than 60. They've actually done a lot better for me in lower uh, temperatures as well. Like the anthuriums that I was growing in my Millsbo, they just, they've been doing so well too. So yeah, I think my next thing is going to be building out an actual greenhouse specifically for the environmental, ideal environmental conditions for anthuriums. Well, what I consider to be ideal. And uh, yeah, I just find that they don't need sort of that high humidity, high light like my philodendrons do. So. Anywho, yeah, this is growing in that XO right now, which it is a lot lower light, a lot lower humidity than my bigger XO, and it's doing really well. I love it so much, it's beautiful. The next one, I have included this in a favorites before. This is my Alocasia scalprum. I, yeah, I mentioned before they were selling these at our local greenhouses, I got this for a steal of a deal. It's much smaller. All of the leaves are about this size on it and um, it's kind of pushed back and forth between big, 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 small, big, small leaves and I did have a little bit of an issue with yellowing. I think I actually might have over fertilized uh, recently. It was one of those times where I got really like frantic at night wanting to do a bunch of things and then I got tired but there was a big mess but I wanted to finish what I was doing so I just quickly like put together this this big bucket of fertilizer water and yeah I noticed that some of my plants like yellowed a lot and this was one of them so you can kind of see that yellowing on here and also that yellowing here on one of the more big recent leaves, which is this one, but I'm covering the most recent one, which is this guy. And holy guacamole, like this thing is a beast. It's not fully hardened off yet. It Right now, it just looks slightly bigger than this leaf here, but once it fully hardens off, I'm thinking it's probably gonna stretch to about right here, about, but 
I don't know, when I hold it like this, it doesn't look that big, but like in comparison to let's say my arm, you know what I mean? Like it's actually really big. In the XO, it takes up a lot of space. My XO is 36 inches wide and it takes up almost, maybe definitely like a quarter of it going that way because it's hanging on the side of the wall. But yeah, this thing is a big boy, really, really big boy. And it's held on to so many leaves. Honestly, this alocasia has been way easier than my alocasia Michalitsiana maxkowskii. It's been easier than my alocasia uh, green dragon, that's for sure. And yeah, I mean, it kind of looks like one of those alocasias that would be really finicky and just would throw a tantrum at everything, but no. This one is a definite trooper and I'm just obsessed with this unreal leaf blade texture. Like, how is this a plant? The abaxials are juicy and delicious. It's very, very, very red when it first comes out, but as it ages, it kind of starts to fade. Like, you'll see the oldest leaf has sort of faded a bit, and this leaf here used to be a lot more red, or like that purple color, and now it's like, fading away and then all, as well as the leaf that came more recently. Like if you compare the abaxials of these two, you can see how much it kind of fades out over time. But when it's brand new, like it's just, it's incredible. Second to last one here is nothing you haven't seen as well. <laughs> gosh, this is my, oh my gosh. gosh. This is my Philodendron Dean McDowell. The reason I'm including it in this video is because this poor thing has just been through it this fall and winter. Uh, the shelf is right in front of a, a heater and it's our heater is on all day long and uh, it is pretty warm and it's just beating down on this plant constantly. And despite it sort of being sort of abused right now, it's just, it's been kind of just hanging in there, you know? There was a newer leaf that came more recently, but because, and my neighbors are vacuuming. <laughs> despite uh, me having a humidifier next to it, despite me spraying it, the low humidity and the warmth just got to it and it just would not unfurl. It was just all kinds of warped and gross. So I just, I ripped it off. It was gonna die off anyway, but I kept this. I feel like there are nutrients in the petiole and mobile nutrients can move into the rest of the plant. So I just try and chop off as little as I can and then kind of let the rest of it sort of fall off on its own. But the good news is, is this caterpillar was teeny tiny, like last week. It was probably like this small, and I was like, oh my gosh, this plant is gonna give me the smallest little leaf, but the caterpillar has grown exponentially. And I'm not thinking there's gonna be another massive leaf, but I think I should be able to get one that's at least this big. And despite this one being like chomped off, I feel like this is one of my most favorite McDowell leaves that I've ever gotten. And I don't know, it just looks so chonky and, and cute and round and pillowy. Not that this one doesn't look pillowy too, but for some reason this one just, I don't know. There are too many noises. I'm having a sensory overload right now. I can't think. This is why I need a house in the middle of the, of the forest to be in complete silence. That would probably drive me crazy too. I showed this pot in my uh, Come Plant Shopping With Me video where I was at Bandula and I did grab a couple of these and they have been amazing for my crawlers. They don't have drainage holes, but my friend Erin has had these before and she would just drill some at the bottom. So if you're not really fond of growing without drainage holes, but you do want some rectangular planters, these are the Elho brand ones. They're quite small. I kind of wish that they had a bigger size, but I mean, this plant is pretty big and it's housing it uh, really well. But yeah, I, I wish I could get my hands on one a little bit larger than this, but it's been great. I mean, it took to the transplant well, um, despite it being beaten up by winter. She's, uh, she's hanging in there. Last, but certainly not least, 
Some of you guys are gonna eye roll so hard when I show this plant. You're gonna be like, when will she ever not include this in a favorites? I just can't. It is my favorite import to date. It is one of my all-time favorite plants. It was the one plant that I genuinely missed when I was in California. She's back. My philodendron gloriosum. Um, that leaf that I said was gonna die soon, she's still here. She's dying a slow death, but you know what? She's giving life to, whoa. She's bringing new life into this world. Do you guys just see this little peepee -pee sticking out? Yeah, this was, I think the last time I, sh I'm getting it soil everywhere. The last time that I showed this leaf on my channel, I think it was still hardening off, like it wasn't fully hardened off yet, but now she's fully hardened off and she's, she's beautiful. Right now I have this one living in my Millsville cabinet with some of my anthuriums in my plant room, primarily because I did have a slight case of adult thrips on the shelf. And while I was in California, I did not want her to be exposed to them. I wanted her to be protected. So she's been living in there. She's been seemingly happy. She's pushing out a new leaf. Um, this leaf hardened off beautifully. There were hardly any snags. It didn't have any trouble getting out of the caterpillar, which I feel like is a notorious problem for people growing aeroids, specifically gloriosums, indoors. And um, yeah, she's getting big but I did repot her recently because it was just too much. I did chop off the, end, the tail end of it. I sold a chunk of it to a friend. Hopefully she can get it to push out something because this plant has amazing genetics. But yeah, now I've got more space in this pot for it to crawl a little bit more, probably about two more leaves, and then this is gonna have to be repot again. But since the repot, I am seeing some new roots. So this one is brand new here. And I think that's the only new root so far. But yeah, the next time you guys see this plant, this leaf will likely be gone and probably even this one, which is already starting to yellow. I'm, I'm just so smitten with this plant. This has by far been one of the best import investments ever. Uh, if I had an opportunity to import more of these types of gloriosums, I would do it in a heartbeat, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna baby this one like crazy. So anyway, I'm gonna go grab Pudge and we're gonna say goodbye. Whoa, you got comfy real quick. Okay, this is probably gonna be my last favorites video until maybe, yeah, like I said, maybe March or something, just because I have other videos planned and I don't think I'll have space in the week or during the months of January, February to squeeze in a favorites video. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. Maybe by the next favorites video, I'll have some new plants by then. I mean, I'm sure I will. But yeah, I've, I feel like I've kind of exhausted the entire collection, which is kind of crazy. I'm not really sure if there's any plant in my house that you haven't seen. I'll have to think about that. Let's uh, say bye to our friends. <laughs> Why do you look so concerned? We are gonna get out of your hair. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you if you've been here from the beginning or this is the first video you're ever watching. Uh, Pudge and I both appreciate you being here very much. And we will see you in the next one.